Now, if you've ever spent any time building e-commerce sites with WooCommerce, you'll know there's only so much you can do with a classic editor. In this short tutorial, I'll show you how you can add the Gutenberg editor to WooCommerce and open up a world of possibilities. So let's take a quick look at the differences and then I'll show you how to do all of this for yourself. So I'm going to take a boring WordPress WooCommerce page like this, where we simply have a plain old description and turn it into something just a little bit more interesting where we've got things like call to action, features, those kinds of things, lots and lots of really cool options, all just using Gutenberg and WooCommerce. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is get WordPress to know that we want to use Gutenberg. By default, you can't actually do this. Now, all we need to do is add a little bit of code to our website, which might sound a little bit on the scary side, but I'm going to show you how you can use a free plugin to do this and you don't have any problems then, you can't mess your site up. We're gonna be using the free plugin called Code Snippets. All you need to do is download and install that, and then we're ready to go add in our little bit of code. Once you've downloaded and installed Code Snippets, all we need to do is head into the dashboard, and we're gonna come down and choose the option for Snippets, and we're gonna add a new snippet inside here. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna give this a name, we're gonna call this Woo Gutenberg Editor, and then all we need to do is copy this little block of code. This will be in the description below and also linked to the site so you can drop this in. You don't need to worry too much about what it does, but I'll quickly just tell you. The first section is all about enabling Gutenberg to work with WooCommerce itself. And then the next section just enables or make sure that the categories and tags work inside your product page. Once you've done that, all you need to do is make sure it says run this snippet everywhere. You can drop a description in if you want to. So we could say insert description, there we go and add any tags if you want to use this. So we're gonna say save changes and activate. And once we've done that, we've now set this up to work inside our WooCommerce product pages. So now if we head over to take a look at our products and we'll open up an existing product. So we'll open these cushions up. You'll see when we now go into there, we'll now have the Gutenberg editor at the top as opposed to what we had before, which is the old fashioned classic editor. Now, if for any reason you don't see this right hand column, all you need to do is click on the little cog icon because sometimes this can disappear when you enable this feature. Okay, so what does this do now? Well, it gives us the ability to easily start using Gutenberg features inside our description. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna click on classic edit, we're gonna say convert to blocks. And what that's gonna do is basically convert this little block of text that we had as our description into a Gutenberg block. You can obviously delete this if you want, if you don't want it inserted inside you anyway. So now we've done that, what difference does that make to the front end of the site? Well, let's just open up that product, which is cushions, and let's take a little look. So inside there, everything is looking pretty much exactly the same as it did before. You can see there's our description, additional information and so on, and there's our little block of text, our description. However, what we have done is just given us the ability to easily start using Gutenberg inside here. So let's take that for a little spin. Let's come back into our editor and let's just add something underneath that's just an ordinary Gutenberg feature, a Gutenberg block. So let's just say, let's add a button in and we'll just add a simple button and we'll just drop in some text. There we go, just to let anybody just know there's a button, and we'll just update that page. So now if we head back over into our product and refresh this, we now have our button inside here. But what exactly does this mean for us? Well, it means we can get a lot more creative in how we lay things out. We can take advantage of not only Gutenberg blocks, but also third-party design libraries like Stackable, Cadence Blocks, those kinds of things. So let's take a look at how we can start to create something just a little bit more interesting than just the boring bog standard layout that we already have. I've got a couple of things installed. I've got the Stackable free version. So that gives us not only a range of predefined layouts for pages and also just blocks, it also gives us some extra tools. And you get the same kind of thing if you're using the Cadence Blocks and many other popular block functions. I've also got a plugin called Block Navigation. I'll put a link in the description to this. It's really, really useful and just allows you to easily drag and drop and position things as you want them to inside your actual layout of any kind of uh, Gutenberg page. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this blank description area and we're going to create something just a little bit more interesting. So let's start by adding a container. Now a container is basically just a way to group our different blocks together and it's part of Stackable, but I think you also get something very similar if you're using a tool like Cadence Blocks and so on. So I'm going to just do a search for container. We're going to drop that inside there and now you can see this allows us to control how our content sits inside the page. So I'm going to just open up the settings on there and set this to be plain so nothing is 
displaying around it. And now I can just start adding things inside there. And if I want to control this, I've got style and I've got advanced options. So we can have a little bit more control. Let's just add something new in first of all. So let's just go to our design library and let's open this up. And this is one of the snackable design library items. You can see to start off with, we've got this selection of various different design aesthetics. And you can see if we look inside there, we can see the different kind of designs. These are all free. Anything that's underneath that are all part of the paid for version of stackable. But these are just starting points. You can use these as you see fit. So let's say I like the look of this header. I'm going to just select that and that will now insert that directly into our page inside our container. And if we open up the block navigation, you can see there's our container and nested inside there is this entire header section. So we've already got something that's a bit more interesting. Obviously, it's not really in keeping with what we are creating, so we can tweak that and fine tune it very easily. We'll just select it and choose to open the block settings and now we can just change whatever we want. So we'll say we're happy with the title, for example, but I want to change the typography to be a bit more in keeping with my design. Well, I can come in and I can now adjust that. So we can say we want to set this to the same font format, which is Montserrat. And we're also going to change the weight of this to something like 300. Already looks a little bit more in keeping. And you can see how easy it is to start adding these in. I want to change the color of the buttons, for example. So we'll come down. Let's just get rid of this typography setting to start off with. Come down to our buttons and we can change button one, for example, and we'll set that to be the orange color. And we'll come down to button two and we'll do the same thing on there. So we'll set that to have the orange color as well. Now it's already looking better, but the image in the background isn't relevant. So we can easily do things like change that. So again, we can come down to the block background, change our image, and we'll set something up, for example, like this. Actually, let's try something like this. We'll select that, adjust any opacity and so on to get what you want. That's how easy it is to drop that inside there. So let's just say we want to add something else in now. So we'll just click to add a new item. We'll click, choose the design library, open our design library up, and now we'll just find another item that I want. I like this feature grid, so I'm going to just drop that inside our design. We can just click now, change the images to something that's a bit more in keeping. So let's just grab some images that work with what we're trying to convey. Simple as that. You can see it doesn't take any more than a couple of seconds to start creating something that's a little bit more interesting. And again, we can change the buttons, the color, the typography, all those kinds of things. So for example, our buttons, we want those to pick up that same color, change the typography, and just finally come in and change the titles on these. And again, come into our typography settings. And if you're coming from a background of using a tool like Elementor, Divi, those kinds of things, any page builders, this is all gonna feel incredibly familiar to you. There's nothing you haven't already probably used a million times. So let's just add one more item inside here. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to click to add a new item in. We're gonna to go to our design library and we're gonna open up our design library and find something that I think looks good. We're gonna use this option, this feature. And I just wanna show you how easy it is now to fine tune this to get exactly what you want. So for example, this color scheme doesn't really fit into what we want. So what we need to do is just quickly make some changes. To do that, come to our background color, for example, choose a background color, come down to our buttons, scroll up a little bit, change that so it's in keeping with our color scheme. We can change our title. Again, we can just use the typography, set that to be Montserrat, change our weight on there. Obviously, we want to change the color on this, so we'll set the color and do exactly the same then for the description underneath. So again, all we need to do, choose the color and bang, you can see how easy that is. We've got the separator at the bottom. We can easily come in and just make changes to that. We don't want this ugly looking drop shadow, so let's just take that off there. Okay, so we've now created a more customized layout. So what we can do now is we can come back in and just make sure everything is sitting as we want. So you can see the feature, for example, isn't in the right place. Let's just drag that up to where it needs to go and we can get rid of this accidental block inside this. We'll remove that from there and there's our design. Let's just finally change that picture as well. Let's just add something like this in there. Okay, so we've now created our layouts. We can update this and now we can hop over and take a look at what this looks like on the page itself. And there we go. This is what we ended up with. A little bit of tweaking, adjusted some of the images, those kinds of things. And you can see we have a much more interesting looking page layout that sits and fits inside the design aesthetic of the overall online store using Gutenberg and using all the template designs that you've got as part of WordPress itself. So you can see everything looks pretty cool. However, you can see there's one little thing that we don't really want, which is this pointless description at the top that kind of throws things off. How do we deal with that? Again, we can use code snippets and a simple little bit of code, and I'll show you how to do that right now. 
I've hopped back over into code snippets and all we're going to do is create a new snippet. I've named this remove description title and we're going to drop in this simple little block of code. And this just tells WooCommerce and WordPress to add a filter and that filter is to remove basically just that description title. Nothing more than that. You don't need to understand it, you just need to have it part of your site. Once you've done that, run the snippet everywhere, drop a description if you want to, we'll save the changes and activate on that, and we come back over, we'll find that's no longer there. So now with the page refreshed, scroll down and you can see we no longer have that description and everything looks a lot nicer and neater. Our tabs all still work, you can see all the same things are inside there. We've got everything set up as we needed to. To learn more about creating a slick looking e-commerce website with WooCommerce and WordPress, watch this video next. And if you've made it this far in the video, well why not hit that thumbs up button, it really does help me out. And while you're at it, why not also click the subscribe button and smash the bell icon. But if you didn't get value from the video, well feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tetson, until next time, take care.